Tonight, cannabis seized by police during a raid in Port Germain. And while it catches footy fever ahead of the weekend's Marsh Cup match. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. Police have seized nine cannabis plants following a raid in Port Germain. Authorities are now calling on residents to keep an eye on anyone who may be cultivating the plant. These large cannabis plants are now off our streets thanks to a local tip-off. Police raided a Port Germain address around 3 o'clock Wednesday afternoon to find this garden of illicit drugs. Those items were seized and a gentleman from that address was reported for cultivating cannabis. Port Germain, Yunter and Gladstone patrols attended the scene. The man will be appearing in court at a later date. Is any time we can get uh, any sort of drug off the street is a good thing. Um, people obviously um, are willing to distribute these sort of uh, items to the public. Police say they'll continue to work together to keep the Mid-North drug free, urging anyone with information to come forward. And we can't do that successfully without help from the public. And um, that's why we do urge anyone with information to contact Crime Stoppers. Police are now turning their focus back to regular roadside operations where they'll continue to target the increasing issue of drug driving in the region. We do have a high hit rate um, in our area, um, so it's one of the, the areas that we focus on heavily. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. A 15-year-old Port Piri male has been charged with assault following reports a woman was allegedly assaulted by a teenager on a bike along Halliday Street in Risdon Park yesterday afternoon. Police say community assistance led them to an arrest. It was great to see the good uh, quick response from police, also the assistance from the public, um, which led to the quick arrest. The suspect was granted bail and will appear in the youth court at a later date. A 17-year-old Port Lincoln motorist has been caught allegedly driving under the influence of cannabis. Patrols pulled the female driver over on Felter Street just after one yesterday afternoon, where she allegedly returned a positive reading for the illicit substance. The teenager was given a direction not to drive for 24 hours, while her sample was sent for forensic testing. South Australia's biggest grain storage handler, Viterra, has announced it will shut its doors on 12 silos across the state. Bunkers in Cow, Mangalo, Melrose, Goolna and Tulagi will all be affected, with 14 permanent jobs now left in limbo. The company has reassured farmers they'll still have access to the remaining 55 silos, including two in Western Victoria. It's unknown what will happen with the disused silos. Country residents could soon access a new Medicare rebate scheme for emergency GP consultations undertaken over the phone if there's a suspected coronavirus case. Laura Milovanovic has more. The Rural Doctors Association of Australia is backing the new potential rebates and hope it'll keep those infected at home. Video and telephone consults will be included in the new scheme. So that... Uh... They can follow up patients that are in isolation with the potential or suspected coronavirus to free up resources and to stop, try and stop the spread of infection. With these calls, a rebate is called on to ensure doctors are not out of pocket. Calling on the government to be able to pay a standard consultation rate when a GP rings and has a consultation with a patient over the phone so that uh, the doctor can be remunerated for their time. Isolation a priority for those suspected with the virus. In a statement, a spokesperson for the Department of Health said they may have better results through managing it through special purpose phone lines, clinics and laboratories, saying this will ensure infection control is consistent. To really contain the spread of coronavirus, it's really important that people follow the government directions and are able to self-isolate. So if you're self-isolated at home, you need a mechanism for which your GP can check on how you're going. The association is hoping to get an answer over the rebates and to see them implemented in coming weeks. There's just one sleep left until Port Adelaide and the Western Bulldogs clash at Bennett Oval in Wyala. Port players have been kept busy, undertaking numerous community visits while also preparing for tomorrow's match.
Touching down into Wyala, Port Adelaide players hit the town running. We've been looking forward to uh, this game for a good part of a year, actually. We know of people from Wyala who come to our games just about every week. You know, they're very devoted fans of Port Adelaide. The first destination was Longstreet Primary School, welcoming hundreds of excited students. It's great for us to come out here. They're always super positive and energetic and uh, we sort of feed off that as well. Yeah, it was pretty cool for them to come down. The players teaching a lesson in healthy eating. How much fruit and veg you should eat and how much water to drink. And the best part of the day for most, a push-up competition. A new push-up champion, uh, Kane Farrell got, got out muscled there. Um, he had a good crack, but uh, young girl Katie um, just managed to get him done. Next stop was Memorial Oval, participating in an Auskick clinic for children of all ages. Really excited, bit speechless. We love foot power. Working on the skills of the young kids, getting around them, you know, putting a smile on their face. It was a quick dash to South Wyala Football Club, where the diehard fans got to enjoy a meal and get photos and autographs with the players. Since I was three, my uncle and my dad got me right into my Port Power. This morning's captain run saw the players take to the new oval in a last-minute session before tomorrow's match. Port Adelaide's got great roots out here at Wyala as well and now with the GFG Alliance as well we're, we're certainly stronger so to come here and, and you look around the grounds in magnificent condition we're just so happy to be here and be a part of the community. Yeah, I actually play football myself so this is quite exciting to be able to see them. The players also taking part in the official opening of Food Bank along with a visit to patients at the Wyala Hospital who will be cheering them on from their hospital beds. The Bennett Oval gates will open at 2 in the afternoon for a 3.40 opening bounce. As for now, locals are enjoying the players' company around town. Go power! Their opponents, the Western Bulldogs, arrived in town this afternoon. Sophia Contagonis, Seven Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, we take a look at the Powers community visit to Port Lincoln. A new suicide prevention measures launched in Broken Hill. Welcome back. Hundreds of lucky football fans in Port Lincoln got to meet their idols as the Port Adelaide Football Club toured the town. Young athletes were put through their paces as they trained alongside the professional players. A sea of black, white and teal as Port Adelaide returned to Port Lincoln. It's pretty good. It's just uh, obviously the, what's been going on at the, at the moment with bushfires. So as a club we sort of want to be able to give back um, as much as we can. Ten of the team's best players hosting a super clinic at Centenary Oval. More than 120 junior athletes hit the field in a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's good to get um, the chance to bring players back to uh, the local community. They enjoy coming across. The Magpie team visiting Port Lincoln, Wyala and Fire Ravaged Adelaide Hills this week. Just trying to be able to give back to um, you know, all these kids and communities that are affected. Air Peninsula young gun Trent Burgoyne has football running in his blood. His father, uncle and grandfather have all played for the club. I'll probably turn a bit more professional when I was 14, but um, yeah, sort of made that decision. I wanted to be an AFL player pretty young. The players preparing for this weekend's match in Wyala. Off the back of the shock announcement, their game in Shanghai has been cancelled due to the coronavirus outbreak. Really disappointed that we can't continue that after three successful trips over there. But you can't sort of tamper with health and when people say don't go there you've got to uh, bow to the experts. Nathan Reg to Seven Spencer Golf News. A Port Perry mother who deals with crippling pain is pleading for an immediate suspension of medical mesh implantations. Speaking at a parliamentary inquiry this week, her husband has called the surgery life ruining. A never-ending nightmare for this victim. Her family are pleading for SA Health to halt pelvic mesh surgery. I'm actually quite distressed because I don't think women know the actual major problems that go with this device. Um, I don't think they're being given informed consent. Every day there's another woman has this put into them um, that could have a failure. And if it's 30%, which we believe it is, then one in three of those women is going to have some sort of adverse reaction to this. A court case currently pending with pharmaceutical giant Johnson & Johnson, but Kim has had many women reach out to her through her online support group. 
I, I know of probably five or six women who in the last week have had a letter from Shine to say that they have one of these devices and they had no idea that they'd even had them implanted. It's robbed this family of life experiences. Her partner is fed up victims aren't receiving the compensation they need. I'm frustrated that there are other women every day coming towards her and saying, I think I have a mesh problem, I can't explain my symptoms. I'm frustrated that um, even after a federal inquiry, states aren't doing enough. Deep concerns raised for those not aware of the risks. There is no surgeon in South Australia that can remove these. They're not credentialed. Um, so women are left in pain and suffering. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Lifeline Broken Hill Country to Coast will be delivering free suicide prevention training to the local community. The sessions have been organised to help locals understand about recognising the signs. Training sessions that could be life-saving. Thanks to funding from Broken Hill City Council, Lifeline Broken Hill is helping to raise further awareness about dealing with suicide in the local community. Training sessions will be held over the next two months. It's important that we not only provide that education and, and support around people talking about it themselves, but when people are actually talking about it, people are understanding these are some of the signs. The first is Safe Talk, a program which heightens suicide awareness and the signs that someone is considering ending his or her life. More directed at um, suicide prevention, so it's asking those hard questions, um, you know, are you suicidal? The second session is Accidental Counselling, aiming to teach people how to recognise, respond and refer someone affected by mental health issues. It also assists with counselling skills and techniques to de-escalate people in crisis. Making you aware of people around you and even your own behaviours, um, looking for the signs and asking the hard questions. If you or someone you know needs help, call Lifeline on 13 11 14. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us, we go trackside for this year's running of the Port Lincoln Cup and Cole's Port Augusta unveils new artwork. Thousands of racegoers and punters hit the track today for the annual Port Lincoln Cup. Local trainers and horses competing against some of the best in the state on a day mixing thoroughbred racing with fashion. A day of fashion, fun and nail-biting racing. <laughs> Port Lincoln dressed up for its big day of racing. This is the best country racetrack in South Australia. Yep. There was glitz and glamour with fascinators, a popular choice by the ladies. The sun's shining now so it was a bit gloomy earlier but yeah always love a bit of sun. Nearly 3,000 race goers were track side, some hoping their lucky tips would turn into fortune. Lost the first three races but um, you're better off winning at the end then you can leave with some money. Not going too good. <laughs> Many putting money on last week's Prelude Cup winner, Dexter U Devil. I've been watching it the last few times in Lincoln. I think it can make the distance and uh, it's, it's a very competitive horse, so yeah. The stakes were just as high off the track, with more than 40 of Port Lincoln's best dressed frocking up for the fashion on the field. Absolutely, got my best thongs on today. Yeah, I'm a bit nervous actually, because lots of pretty warm money in this race and fashion field. Oh, it's just a great day, great for Port Lincoln and looking forward to uh, the cup race. But Fashions on the field, that'll be interesting. Contestants putting their best foot forward to wow the judges. We've got uh, guests interstate, international guests come here and it really, you know, even today's an absolute pearler of a day so getting people out and about and enjoying Port Lincoln and the Air Peninsula. I do have a friend who's going to so I'll be her cheer squad. But at the end of the day it was all eyes on race number seven as 14 strong horses took to the field competing for the $50,000 Port Lincoln Cup. Cheers. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Australia's biggest barbecue fundraiser visited Port Augusta today as part of a nationwide event. The local Lions Club cooking up sausages to raise funds for the Childhood Cancer Research Foundation. We're very um, proud of what we present um, and people appreciate Lions for what they do and they're happy to support us because uh, they know that every dollar we raise goes to the project involved with they're hoping the lunches will raise the funds that will lead to a cure for cancer. 
Coles has a new addition to their Port Augusta store, with an art piece supporting inclusion now on display. The artist says the piece represents the diversity of the Upper Spencer Gulf. Marika Davies was contacted by Coles to design a piece for their store. She says the painting is a collaboration of all things Port Augusta. I thought what better than the Spencer Golf um, because then it's not just one lot of people, it's everybody because everybody swims, everybody fishes and everybody goes boating in the Spencer Golf so I wanted to make that my centre part. The painting also a representation of the growing number of Indigenous workers at the store. The Indigenous community takes up about 20% of the population in Port Augusta and we went from having about 2% Indigenous team members to about 20-25% um, in a space of a year. It's, it's a positive for Aboriginal people as well but as a community we're working together as one so that's very important for me and, and being proud of that as well. Coles Management says it's a privilege to own a piece capturing their hometown. To have one of her paintings up in our store that represents our whole community as a whole, um, you know, paints a very special picture and it's really nice um, to be able to support her and, you know, have her artwork up in our store. Marika says the piece was a big challenge but is looking forward to what the future holds. Yeah, I might do another one later on down the track when I'm not so busy. Laura Milovanovic. 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. We preview this weekend's Broken Hill Cricket Grand Final. And Brit will have the long weekend weather forecast. Hello again. Broken Hill's local cricket season will come to an end this weekend when Central and North square off at the Alma Oval. Our reporter Patrick Ranke has the details. Worries about tomorrow's A-grade grand final being washed out are nowhere to be seen. The sun's out, a cracking game is on the cards. North and Central have been the front runners all season in the A-grade, a class above West and South. Central finished as minor premiers, but only just the Magpies playing quality cricket all season. Jared Paul, Tristan Smith and Damon Pettit have been among their best batsmen, but it's their bowlers who have shined, with the likes of David O'Malley, Ross Casey and the in-form Michael Molsty taking plenty of wickets. For North, it'll be a tough match tomorrow, missing two key batsmen in Cody Howard and Dan Tabrak. A lot of pressure will be on captain Tobias Hack to steer the Bulldogs to their third premiership in a row. He's also the Alma pitch curator, confident it'll be a good spectacle. With last week's wicket, we're bringing that back up, so the work's already been done last week. Pretty much just bringing it up to scratch again, and uh, it's probably it was played really well last week, so it's probably going to play even better this week. The A grade final starts at 12:30. The B grade match starts at the exact same time here at the Zinc Oval. And with a preview of that match and the rest of the region's action, here's our cricket experts with their tips. Broken Hill Cricket Finals this weekend, with North taking on Central, a repeat of last year's final. North missing Dan DeBrack and possibly Cody Howard, the two of their chief run scorers, brings them back to the field. I think uh, Central possibly um, could stop North from getting the three-peat in this game. Michael Molsky may prove the difference with he, he's in good form with the ball at the moment and that may be the difference between the two sides. In B grade, Warriors once again into a B grade final. I think maybe this could be their, their year and I think the Warriors may get up in B grade. Hello and welcome to the first week of finals in Port Piri Cricket. The action starts with props taken on Sully North and the elimination final starting at 10.30 at Port Oval. Props have struggled for runs all year against the other top four sides, so need their batters to perform. I'm tipping Sully North. At Memorial Oval, it's one deer up against the new kids on the block, Port Germain, in the qualifying final from 12 o'clock. Wondera have had their usual strong season, finishing 16 points clear on top. Both teams have strong lineups, and this match should be a beauty. I'm tipping Wondera. Hello and welcome to the Wyala Cricket Association first final. This week we see North Wyala take on Rupina. I see this game going right down to the wire as both teams are pretty evenly matched. I'm going North Wyala in this one thanks to a Matt Bennett's masterclass. Welcome to this week's Port Lincoln Cricket Tips. Semi-final time here in Port Lincoln and some crackerjack games of cricket going to be played at Centenary Saturday and Sunday. 
First game says top of the table, Tasman's take on Southern Air Saturday at Centenary. Gonna tip my boys Tasman's to go straight through the grand final. Next game is Cheltenham Waybacks at Centenary on Sunday. Gonna be another really good game. They've battled it out a fair bit since Christmas being T20 grand finalists as well. I think uh, Charlton's experience will get them over the line in, uh, in this final and they'll progress through to play the loser of Tasman Southern Air. Thanks for listening to the Portland and Cricket Tips. And with a look at the long weekend forecast, here's Britt with the details. Thanks, John. It's been a mostly fine day apart from showers about the Lower Eyre Peninsula. Broken Hill reached 26 degrees, Port Augusta and Port Pirie both 25, Wyala 23, Port Lincoln 22. Here are today's skies with low cloud and cool southerly winds bringing the odd light shower. To our north, mostly dry and clear with a strengthening high pressure ridge. Taking a look at tomorrow now on the Gulf waters, winds south-southeasterly at around 10 to 15 knots, seas at 1 to 1.5 metres. It's looking to be a mostly sunny day. Port Augusta, Woodna and Corn all with a high of 30 tomorrow. Port Perry 29, Kadena 28, Wyala and Broken Hill 26, Clare 25, Cleve 24, Port Lincoln and Coffin Bay both 23 degrees. Fine and partly cloudy through the weekend and into the new week at Port Lincoln, Cleve and Woodna, all with fairly consistent maximums, not much variation over the coming days. Wyala and Kadena with tops in the late 20s, also looking fine and partly cloudy. Similar conditions at Port Augusta, maximums hovering just above 30 degrees. Port Piri and Clare both quite consistent as well, fine and partly cloudy with maximums increasing by a degree or two on Tuesday. And finally to Broken Hill where it's looking to be sunny on Monday with tops in the late 20s. And John, I bet you're happy to see on Wyala's forecast for tomorrow, 26 and sunny, perfect conditions for the footy. The old hometown putting on a spectacle, thanks Britt. And that's the local news for tonight and the week. Just a reminder, you can catch up with us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. I'm John Hunt, thanks for your company. I'll have updates later, but until then, have a great long weekend. Good night.